Special thanks to CD Keys for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description to save up to 90% on your favorite games. Fallout 4 is a unique game. It's, in my opinion, an okay action shooter with RPG elements that's good for one or two playthroughs. Not great, not terrible. But it runs on the creation engine, one of the best engines ever made for modding. Nearly everything can be changed to your liking. Wanna play Mario? Or maybe you want to play as a toilet wielding a baby. Sean, he doesn't even know it yet. The modding is so good, it's helped Fallout 4 hold a dedicated player base for almost 10 years. I'm going to show you how to start modding, and I'm going to give you my personal mod list. You can find my collection down in the description, available for download, and if I helped you at all, leave a like so I can help at least one more person. Now without further ado, let's start the show. Okay, so modding can be done two different ways, either manually by following any given instructions the author details, or by way of mod managers. In terms of managers, there's a few out there, but I think you should only be considering two. The first one is Vortex, which is considered a user-friendly modding experience, and the second is MO2, a manager that gives you greater direct control over your files. I personally don't use Mod Organizer 2, I only use Vortex, so this tutorial will be for Vortex only. In this case, Sorry, but I won't be able to troubleshoot anything for MO2 either. So once you've chosen your mod manager of choice, it's time to get it downloaded and start the process that it walks you through. For Vortex, it looks a little something like this. Okay, so we're going to start by downloading Vortex. Vortex can be found on the Nexus Mods site, and it is, I believe, Nexus Mods' like new in-house manager. In any case, you're going to download the latest version now. It'll take you to a mod page, a lot like the mods you're going to be looking for. You're just going to go ahead and hit Manual Download slow download, and then it'll pop up a window. From here, you just want to select where you want to download this EXE. I'm going to put it in my downloads folder. Once it's finished downloading, just check your downloads for the file. Go ahead and open it. This will open the executable, and from here you get to choose where to install it. Walk through the installer really quickly, and once it's finished, check the Run Vortex box if it isn't checked, and hit Finish. This is going to open up Vortex for us so we can start modding. Vortex is the program that you're going to use to manage your mods, your load orders, as well as your profiles. And if you don't know what a profile is, think of it like this. Essentially, you're going to be able to create different modded playthroughs and just plug and play as you'd like whenever you want to boot a specific playthrough up. Now, with all that being done, let's go ahead and let's start a new profile. So as you can see, I use Vortex quite a bit already, and therefore I have different profiles. Just so I can simulate your experience in starting modding, I'm going to create a new profile. We're just going to name it, uh, I don't know. Yeah, there we go. And this profile is going to have its own save game, so I can further simulate that. It's not going to have its own game settings. So a quick note about this. This profile has its own save games, will do exactly that. It's going to segregate the saves that you create using this profile from the rest of your saves, and it's really handy in being able to manage your save games. You don't have to do this step yourself, by the way. This is just so I can simulate it. And this is how you create a profile. So we're going to hit save, and then I'm going to click enable profile. So when you install Vortex, the first thing you want to do is you want to visit the prompts up in the top and select yes to all of them. They're going to do necessary things that will make Vortex work. These things include things like setting your deployment method, which I use hardlink deployment, and it could even include something like setting your mod staging folder. Mod staging folder is where all of your mods get stored. I chose a custom folder, and in order to do that, you have to go to the settings tab, and then you want to hit the mods tab under that page. Now the second item in that tab is going to be mod staging folder. Now if you'd like to change it, you can click Browse, select a folder that you'd like it to go into, and then hit Apply to lock it in. The second thing we're going to do is extremely crucial, you have to make sure that you do it. So in order to do archive and validation, what you need to do is you need to right click Fallout 4 in your Steam library, and then you're going to hover Manage, and you're going to click Browse Local Files. This will take you to the root directory. Once there, we're going to look for one very important file, fallout4custom.ini. Now if it's not in your directory, don't panic, it's okay, we're going to make the file. The very first thing you want to do to make the file is in File Explorer, you want to hit the view tab and then you want to make sure that file name extensions and hidden items are both checked. This is going to allow you to see whether or not something is an INI file because if I uncheck these, 
Look what happens. I have Fallout 4 custom, but I won't see that it's an I and I. We want to make double sure that we're doing everything correctly. And that's why we're going to keep these two boxes checked. If you have it, make sure that you open it and make sure that these lines of code are inside the I and I file. Now, if you don't have a Fallout 4 custom I and I, that's all right, we'll make one. So here, let me just go ahead and delete mine. And now we're going to make one from scratch. So right click anywhere within the directory and then hover new and you should see text document. That creates a new text document. We're gonna open the text document. Now, when we create our new text document, we're going to go ahead and we're going to enter the lines of code, and then we're gonna save the file. With the file saved, we're going to edit the name of it, and we're gonna start from behind TXT, and we're going to erase that. And then we're gonna put in the name fallout for custom.ini, and you'll know this works because the file type text document should change to configuration setting. Click yes, and there you have it. You've just created fallout for custom.ini and you've activated archive and validation. This is a crucial step for modding. You need to do it. And that's how you activate archive and validation. So cool, we finished those steps so far. Next thing we need to do is we need to find actual mods to download. Now this is gonna be harder for me to simulate because I already have 296 mods installed on my system. That is a lot, obviously. Probably more than is reasonable. But since I wanna simulate what you'll be doing on your end, let's go to nexus.com and let's start looking. So I'm a big fan of weapons mods, and I see this one. I kind of like this. This seems cool. I think we'll give it a shot. One important step before I download, I need to make sure that I have all the requirements. You can't just start downloading mods and then expect them all to work together. A lot of mods need prerequisites to actually make things work. So I see I do not have munitions and I don't want to download it, so I cannot download this mod. My next step is to find a similar mod that I can download. For that, I'm going to look for the tags, see weapons convention, and I'm gonna click it and this will take me through a list of similarly tagged items. Okay, cool. So I see World War II Soviet Nagant M1985 revolver. I am kind of a nerd when it comes to historical weapons, so I'm going to download this. Let's check the requirements. Looks like there's no known dependencies other than the base game. Also really important, let's check the file version it's compatible with. All right, cool. So it looks like there shouldn't be any problems running this mod, so we're gonna go ahead and start the download. There's a BSA packed version, and then there's loose files. Honestly, if there's ever a packed version, I recommend you go with that as it's just a little simpler and a little bit more plug and play. So once you click slow download, it should appear in the downloads tab in Vortex. All right, and now it's finished and it's being added to my mods. We'll check that it's added by setting the status in the sorter to enabled, and there we can see it's been activated. Now you just repeat this process over and over again. Look for mods that you like and then check the requirements to make sure you have what you need. And if you don't have what you need, but you really want the mod, make sure that you open the requirements and download whatever necessary to get it up and running. Make sure you read the instructions. Mod authors detail their mods. They make sure they can work for other people to avoid a lot of troubleshooting comments later down the line. It is essential that you read everything you possibly can to make sure it works. For example, for this CZ Scorpion Evo mod, I need to download one of these main files, which probably provide the textures and sound, and then I need to download one of the plugins. These plugins are different, I should only download one of them. Now I have Tactical Reload, so I'm going to select this one, download it, and it literally downloaded in a flash and entered my load order. Next, I'm going to download one of the main files. I run on 1K resolutions just because I like performance and good looks. And because this is a bigger file, it should take longer depending on whether you chose slow download or fast download, which is paid by the way. Now while you're waiting, this is the perfect time to go and look for your next mod to download. So sometimes when installing a mod, you will get a faux mod menu. And what a faux mod menu is, is basically a quick and simple installer that'll let you apply any patches you might need and choose some configuration settings. A couple of big ones that I can tell you you will encounter this with are CBBE and see-through scopes. I have see-through scopes right here. We're going to uninstall it and then we're going to reinstall it. And this is what a faux mod menu looks like. As you can see, there are a lot of options. Don't worry, just take your time and go through it. For see-through scopes, let me see. I like to replace and I have all the DLC, so I'm going to select and keep all these selected. I have a lot of add-ons and other weapon mods, so I'm going to click auto detect and select add-on mods. And then I'm gonna hit patches. I don't have any of these, so I don't have to worry about them. I can just click finish and there we go. Quick, simple, and easy install. 
Okay, so now that we have both our test mods enabled, I'm gonna go slot them into my personal load order, which means you'll also be getting these once you download my mod list in the description. And here we are. This is our load order and our mod list. Let's look for these mods. And we have them installed already, as well as the Soviet Nagant revolver. Okay, so we have an entire mod list installed, like around 100 mods or so. As you can see, there's a lot going on in this mod list, so we should be ready to go, right? Wrong. First, you have to sort the load order. Load order is incredibly important. Load order is what dictates what loads first in the game and what loads last. Generally speaking, important things should be up here and less important things should be down here. As you can see, I've kept Fallout 4 script extender right near the top, along with other really important engine things like Fallout 4 upscaler, the UFOP. Whereas at the bottom, I have things like World War II outfits, visible galaxy, which is just a texture replacer for the sky, and some various patches. So there's two ways to do this in terms of sorting your load order. When you're just starting, you're going to want to sort the load order and keep it sorted with auto sort enable. This is going to be crucial in keeping your load order sorted. However, I don't really like this. I like having a little bit more control and that's where we get a program called Loot. And Loot is really cool. Loot is an automatic load order sorter. It not only sorts your load order, but it will also warn you about problems with plugins. This is what they'll look like a lot of the time. Now keep in mind, these are base game plugins. I don't have to worry about these being yellow. This is not a big deal. It's if any of these are yellow or red. Red represents a huge problem and you should most likely remove it from your mod list. Yellow will tell you that there's something up that you can take action on, but you don't really have to. For example, Start Me Up, which is an alternate start mod included in the mod list, is tagged as being obsolete and it prompts me to update to the latest version. It also gives me a link to that latest version. I don't want to. I want to keep this version, so I'll just ignore this and not do anything about it. When you want to sort your load order with loot, you just head up here to the sort plugins button, click it, and it'll start sorting. Take a quick scroll of your plugins to make sure no new errors have popped up, and once you've verified that, click apply sorted load order, and there you go, you've sorted your load order. Okay, now the last thing to do is to boot up the game, and when you have Fallout 4 script extender installed, you want to launch it either through the script extender here on the Vortex executable, or if you're like me, you can launch it through Steam. Okay, so we've launched our save, we're in the game, looks like our mods are still in good working order, looks like everything is here. Now this isn't what it's going to look like for you right off the bat, but this is just where my save is at, of course. So let's go and look for those two weapons. A lot of weapons mods you're going to be able to craft in the chemistry station. And yep, there's our CZ Scorpion, and let's see, we need screws. And looking for the Nagant Revolver, we're going to need steel. So let's go get those two things, and by get those two things, I of course mean in going into our cheat terminal and just spawning them in. Why? Because I can, is why. And now we gotta store all this in the bus workshop, and then we can build these two weapons. And uh, I don't really like this outfit, so we're gonna change it with something else. This is an outfit that comes with the mod Depravity. You can find it in one of the chests in one of the early quest locations. And you can also find this in the collection as well. All right, cool, and we're in. Let's go ahead and grab those weapons. Oh, the iron sights look nice on this thing. Hold on. Let's get some good shots of this. And for that, we're going to use the camera mode mod, which I have in the collection as well. All right, cool. And that is one of the weapons right there. It's looking great in Megan's arms, and it's probably going to be an excellent tool for destruction. And let's look at the other one really quickly. Oh yeah, that looks, that looks awesome. That thing just looks incredible. Jeez. All right, this will probably be a really good tool of destruction as well. And you know what? I kind of I kind of don't like this weather, so let's change it with the NACX settings menu. And let's go for something a little bit more pleasant. Ah, much nicer. Okay, time for a killing spree. Someone's around. Let's switch weapons. And take some jet. Oh my god, this thing is crazy. Ah, yeah. 
Take that, you dumb ass bitch. Before I go, here's some final things that I want you to keep in mind if you're going to be modding. Number one is do not remove your mods mid playthrough, especially if they're ESP plugins. This is because often removing mods can be the cause of corrupted saves. Now, in my experience, doing this has been more of a case by case basis, similar to rolling a dice and hitting an unlucky number. But in general, it's still a good idea if you don't do it. You can find out a mod is an ESP by going to the plugin section of Vortex, having a look at the plugins, seeing what you have activated, and then cross referencing that with whatever's here in the mod section. Number two, do your own troubleshooting. 60% of modding is troubleshooting, especially for the bigger mod lists. For mine, I know for fact that if you're going to use it, you're probably going to want to troubleshoot it. There are certain mods that you won't want, certain mods you do want. So if you're going to use anything off my mod list, make sure that you read through each individual mod, see what it does, determine whether or not you really want it. Even my mod list isn't perfect. I, by my own admission, know that it just works. Number three, pay attention to versions and last updated logs. If your mod is really old, there's a chance it's no longer compatible with your game version, especially if you're running on the next gen update. This is especially important if you're installing Fallout 4 script extender. For my mod list in specific, the only compatible version of the script extender is 0.6.23. If you're using the newer script extender beta that's available right now on Nexus, it will not work. If you're looking for that previous version of Fallout 4 script extender, you want to go to the F4SE website, which is right here up at the top, and you want to look down here under the red lettering. Build 0.6.23, perfect, download that. And if you need an older version of the script extender, you can always look in the archive. Here you'll find all the builds you might need to run your specific version of Fallout 4. Number four, if you're ever looking at a mod on your list and you want to go revisit the mod page in a flash, make sure you're signed in with your Nexus account, right click the mod in question and click open on Nexus mods. This is going to take you directly to the mod page where you can peruse whatever the mod page might have to tell you. This could be important for anything from requirements to install instructions, as well as compatibility. And that is a very basic version of how to mod Fallout 4. I tried to make it as simple to follow as I possibly could and demo some of the things you'll find in the mod collection that I posted in the description. Now if this video helped you make sure that you leave a like and subscribe and a comment. I love knowing that I've made a difference in someone's ability to play the game. So until next time guys leave a like if you liked the video, dislike it if you didn't, subscribe if this helped you and take care brush your hair. I'm out of here. Peace.